Well, it's adventure time. Oh, oh. Почет, товарищ. My name is Kalman. Welcome to that Russian gamer guy. Welcome back to Black Sad under the skin. So today we're on our mission, on our mission to go to this gambling game or something, and let's figure out how it's all gonna work out. This is the hotel where the guy is. Ballard Hotel. Oh, Balford. Balford Hotel. Look at our black sad. He's so fancy in this outfit. Here we go, Mr. X. Man in black. All right, country music. Alcohol. Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. Um, I'm the hotel director. I work for Frank Cassidy. Gentlemen, I'll be honest. I work for Frank Cassidy. He asked me to bring you these bottles so you could choose which one you prefer for the game. Oh, sure. I was fixing to leave, but I guess them monuments ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Well, come on in then. Getting in Farnham's room was easy. Earning his trust was another story. I always have an ace up my sleeve. Blackmore? You okay, partner? The best way to earn someone's trust is to make them believe they've earned yours. And oh sometimes, my gosh. the best way to fake it is to tell the truth. I... I don't know where to begin. Since the war, I just haven't been the same. The world is falling to pieces, and so am I. Okay, let's say the word. Since I got back from the war, I haven't been the same. Sorry to hear that, son. You should have paid somebody to go in your place, like I did. The poor bastard didn't have a pot to piss in, so he done a fair deal. Until he went off and got himself killed. But you know what? At least he earned his place in heaven. Good Lord bless that man. And us while we're at it. Cheers! One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. They cloud our judgment and blur the person in front of us, painting them with the shades of our preconceived notions of who they should be. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality that they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace. Not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. To think I had to impersonate him. Oh, I really? Like you. you seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have ticks? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo-wee! Once I had gained Farnham's trust, the hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. Oh my gosh, odd morality. Okay, so I should be kind of rude and hate the poor people. And I bought myself out of war. So that's what's up. What can I do for you, sir? Try to remember, I'm Howard Frank. I'm here to play some poker. I'm here to play me some poker. You got the wrong place, sir. Did you miss the barbershop sign above the door? You have a good evening, sir. No. Wait, uh... What the heck? I failed. Really? Retry? Okay, the I should be rude then. was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. Why, why the screen is black? Alright guys, I had to replay from the very beginning of the chapter from the hotel. So let's see if it's gonna work now. What can I do for you, sir? Alright, so try to remember or I'm Howard M. Farham. Try to remember, I'll be rude. Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. 
Wait, what? Find the requested info before timer runs out. Fuck it. How the fuck can I... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Alright, come on, move. Take it, take it, let me see. Billy Bobby Barber. Yes, I got a Vietnamese shave last night. No, please, come in. Of course, I remember you. Take a seat. Okay, here we go. Mafiosi. You're gonna switch it to closed, huh? No? Okay, interesting. What's happening? What's happening? I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies and someone has to keep them at bay. Oh, this is outrageous. I have to go on stand. That's outrageous. This is downright outrageous. How dare you disrespect me? Seriously? I'd love to see what you'd say about what I'd do to you if you don't answer my question. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave? Try to remember. Damn, sure enough, booze put the nail on the coffin of my first marriage. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. <laughs> Cheater. My second marriage, too. You know what I did to her daddy? What? Same old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my guns and only deal with her curse. Even if I did end up <laughs> marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham. So I'm going to be honest with you. Booker, uh, guess it is bad news. I mean... Okay. I'm Cassidy's slave. He lent me the money for a game deposit, and I lost it all. Now I have to work off my debt. Oh, Cassidy's not your problem, son. It's poverty. Sure enough, I had to pay my own deposit this morning to y'all. And that was just petty cash to me. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me one of the seats. These are the things I am, boy. Wait, I'm, I, I'll show you. I, I gotta get somewhere. Just a sec, I'll get it. Where's the receipt? We have to find the receipt now, I huh? Just, just put, put it over. Oh my gosh, he's so I drunk. I'll be right back. Oof. That's a fact. Okay, we have timer. Here we go. What's happening? Where's the receipt? Oh my god. Could it be the receipt? No. Maybe it's on him. No. What about the table? Ding dong. Interesting name for a town. That's not what I want. Please switch. Is this the receipt? 20. 20,000. All right, we got it. Why didn't you just say you had the receipt in your pocket? I'm almost certain, but tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? A friend tried to remember. I'm trying to remember everything. Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, son of boy. When I met that woman, she had no man, no money, no... Ooh, somebody's calling. Ooh, man. That's probably the person who said to come to the barber shop. Find him. My God, is it in the hero of the day? Who's this? Who's this? I mean, I kind of want to check this thing first. Knowing Farnham, <laughs> the owner of this bra only came here for business. Alright, owner. I'll be damned. Okay, let's see. 
His hand. What's up with his hand? <laughs> this will surely imbue me with the Texan spirit. Yes, sir. New York City. New York City. <laughs> There's something's up with his hand. Sure I probably enough. don't need to imitate his gestures during the game, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to try. Okay. <laughs> What else? His mouth. His nose. It's not going to be easy to sound Texan, but I'll give it my best shot. Hee <laughs> hee! That's what he's doing. Okay, what else? Boxing at the Grand Ole Opry? <laughs> I don't understand where to focus. Nah, just a few bourbons, that's all. Oh, the hat. <laughs> Nothing says Texan like a cowboy hat. Right? <laughs> anyway, Kenny. Thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. Kenny. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> I once knew one Kenny. He was crazy. He died, though. The craziest goddamn Texan in New York. Mm. Okay, it was Kenny, boy. My good old friend Kenny. Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? Oh my so besides god. besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? Uh, Kenny's name? Luckily, Could it there be was the only book? one Kenny in Farnham's address book. Kenny Eeks, residing at... All right, that was easy. Cornell Platt, Manhattan, stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? A nice big pr uh, Palmer door. Okay, let's try to remember. I love this remembering thing. Oh shit. We already At here. least it's comforting to know that when Farnham drinks too much, his female companions have less of a hard time. Okay, okay. Nothing's inside. Shit, shit, shit. Shit, 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 time is running out. Are you Not bullshitting me? Are you bullshitting me? Why the time's out? They smell like a party. I don't know what he asked for. Here's Cassidy though. Don't tell me, Billy Pop. This here is my new friend Father. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Your barber was fixing to give me a shave. Sure enough. Your barber was fixing to give me a shave. <laughs> You can get a good shave at another time. Billy Bob is always at our beck and call. Of course. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's a nice Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'm not armed. Try to remember, try to remember. It's always good to try to remember. Ding dong? Interesting name for a town. Why would you look at it if you already did? Before. Jesus Christ. He's moving so slow. I'm not armed. I think I'm not armed. Is there anything in the restroom? Okay, I'm not armed. That's what's up. There's a picture, there's a picture. Take it. There's another closet. No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. Okay, there's a gun. Here you go. It'll be my pleasure.
All right, that's so interesting. Even though Welcome it keeps me so nervous, this Just memory thing. The table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing gray boxes and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. Uh, no offense to the women he exploits. Our reigning Quincy. champion, Oswald Quince. A title Quince. I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. Uh, I'll do what I can. Y'all dealing with uh, the worst player in Texas. Y'all got a chance, but I'm sure you'll learn something. Y'all are dealing with the worst player in Texas. You're just trying to make me overconfident, aren't you? The truth is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues then? Yeah, of course we are. Is. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. Had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas. Well, I forgot. Was legal. Ding dong? You mean ding dong, Texas? <laughs> ding dong. That's it. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? <laughs> well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up his sleeve as the late Pentimiglia, huh? Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly. <laughs> Polly, eh, no. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they yeah. took it away from me. You have no idea how good my ex wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women, they even take our damn names. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> you're too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool? And I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about furry fellas such as yourself. What's up with the furry fellas, though? I love pool. I hate pool. I love pool. Thanks. I love me some pool. Perfect. It'll be my pleasure. You're looking to start your own pool business, Farnham? Maybe, baby. This guy here wants to start a boxing association in Texas. Guess who he's turning to for advice? To be honest, several things got me worried. So I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Uh... Illegal... What? Athletes hooking up with each other? What? Those their athletes hooking up with each other. Like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah, my star boxer. The reigning champion. He's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but he's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry about it. Billy, uh, bring out the bird. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. Okay, let's the see. The issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. Play to win, play to lose. I mean, I was born to win. Damn it! What again? How many games have you won, Farnham? All of Worst them. Worst player in Texas, huh? Hey, Quint, you better start unbuckling that championship belt. 
<laughs> this ain't over yet. Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Look at this guy. Huh? Oh, hey, hey, hey. Where's the Final. gun? Shotgun. Did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, playing bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Ah, uh, here, I don't know. Try to remember. Try to remember. Anyway, Kenny. Thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. Kenny friends with Farham and Cassidy. God bless you, brother. <laughs> we have to find out. Because I'm a, his friend. I'm supposed to know. The craziest goddamn Texan in New York. And the poor fellow's already got enough on his hands. Now that his wife... Women just gotta have their vices. Their... But she's in a rehab clinic now, hooked on tranquilizers and all that. Okay, an addict. Don't tell me women don't have their vices, too. Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on, come on, give me, give me the bourbon. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Why, he lost? Let's just say it's relatively simple. There's always someone ready to surprise you. Relatively speaking. What's happening? Mm. Well, I'll be damned! I don't believe this! What happened, Farnham? Beginner's luck doesn't last forever. And that's when the real champ comes in. I hope you're ready to lose it all, my friend. No, I'm not. <laughs> Poor Farnham! Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing and he's gonna lose it all with poker. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Mm, yeah, so how can I be of help? All rebel coaches, illegal gamblers. Okay. Having to compete with illegal gamblers like that old Leary fella. Oh, huh. one would almost think that you live in New York, my friend. That son of a bitch killed one of my men and left the poor bastard on my damn porch. But he's a goner now. Why Ever since is the that? Sport got put on TV. People want a fair game, honest boxes, and no shady business. You can't break the law anymore like before. Nowadays, they gotta bribe those big network executives to negotiate for broadcasting rights. Cassidy bribing TV nickers. Okay, homicidal boxers. Homicidal boxers like Bobby Yale. Ha! <laughs> That's some piece of news, huh? Hey, I don't know if he did it, but the real problem is that the fight against my champ Stone might not even freaking happen. Oh, it's gonna Good happen. News. Don't worry about but that. I've almost convinced the governor to let him out of prison on the day of the fight. Under police escort, that is. I bet you the audience gets a kick out of that. Come on, come on. Let's steal another hand before Quince accuses us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen. I suggest you never tell your sons about this game, unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating. Oh, there are better ways to educate children. Texan boys do respond to a good beating. <laughs> I dare say Texan boys do respond to a good beating. Hey, careful, Quince. You're talking to a pro. So, uh, Kenny told me you had quite a house full. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? Oh my gosh, try to remember. What's happening? Try to remember, try to remember. No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. If I'd been a communist, Perhaps the vision of a millionaire choking on his own vomit would have made my day. Even so, I doubt I could have just stood there and watched him die. Oh my gosh, one more time. I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. I didn't see. He died. I didn't see that I have to press space. What the fuck? Retry. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? Try to remember. Oh, 
That's crazy. No, I'm dying so many times in this game. That about to choke on his own vomit. If I'd been a communist, perhaps the vision of a millionaire choking on his own vomit would have made my day. Even so, I doubt I could have just stood there and watched him die. Okay, he's moving, moving, moving. Bams. No, deserving or not, the man would live. What's up with the kids, though? One, two, three, ah. four, five, six. Six wanted something. I don't know how you deal with all of that. Beating them, oh, bitches. Boys. Does it have to be now? Oh, never let Prince near one of your daughters. Uh-oh. Come on, Folly. Children are sacred. I won't Cassidy. lay a finger on them until they're 12. After That's the they're real guy well. calling. <laughs> I'm about Let's to be say, killed. Some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Are you alright, Farnham? No. The heck is happening? The heck is happening? The phone. There goes your winning streak, you sick bastard. I read him out. Keep his secret. Keep his secret. I don't care. Uh, I'd kill if you touched one of my girls. You should be behind bars. I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> yes, I'm fine. Yes, I'm fine. Uh-oh. Something's now, wrong. Now, what if that lovely 12-year-old girl was your sweet little niece? Or my cousin Mike's niece. And what if she disappeared a while back? And what if she'd been taken to work uptown? In a brothel, huh? Huh? What do you think about uh, that? Uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Frank. Frank is about to be dead. Uh-oh. Don't you dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. Oh, <gasps> it's 500 more. <laughs> For washing up. It's a deal. Sorry for the spectacle, fellas. I, uh, I had no idea the game would end like this. What? Please, uh, take my tokens, and that flying scumbag's tokens as well. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some family matters to attend to. Blocking achievement unlocked. With your new venture. Call me, Farnham. All right, thank you. Your that was crazy. Game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again, or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If our common acquaintance should ask you about your business endeavors, tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Signed, Frank Cassidy. This is Cray Cray. Look, he's gonna wake up. That's a rough and crazy night for Mr. Blackset. My own Blackset. tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, Though I'm grateful for your kind help, last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham the second. Guess it is mad. Damn Texans. Ta da. -dum. Interesting. But how is this connected with the main storyline? This is my question. Like, I don't mind this scene, but what is this for? My gosh, I'm having nightmares again. 
Are these my kids, my family? All right, Black Sad. As for me, it was the first time in days that I had gone to bed without my daily Daily beating, oh my gosh. Real shit. Nothing like a bruised body to help you to sleep like a baby. His life is crazy. So many. Maybe I should have given myself a day. Dead people. He has some mental problems, that's for sure. Alright, hello, hello, baby, you called, I can hear a thing. Hmm. Poor hmm. Black Sad, gee. Black Sad. Finally, I need you at the gym, now, please. Oh, what happened with Sonya? 14 days before the fight. It's like two weeks, that's a long period. Half of a month, yo. I think we're like getting closer to 50% of the game maybe a little more maybe a little less but something around oh shit what happened here it was like this when I got here Ah. Uh, when did you get here I've been calling you for over an hour calm down I'll take care of this okay let's investigate had you already finished looking through these papers I wish well, I guess you'll enjoy sorting all this again. Ta da! Bingo. Footprints. What is it? Nothing. Just a freshly signed contract. Footprints in Dunn's office. Jim Bulgar signed the document what with his foot. Do you like sardines? Excuse me? Do you like sardines? Ugh. Smell of sardines. Uh, a paper tissue that smells like sardines in the gym office. Okay. The clues collected allow deduction. We have four deduction allowed. Perfect. Hmm. Looks like the burglar isn't interested in bureaucracy. Not that I suspected otherwise. But it's obvious they weren't looking for money. Did they take anything? No. No. Although... The gun. Did you get back your gun in the hospital? When you went in the hospital room to get your purse, did you get the gun as well? Yes. Isn't it there? I put it back. No I'd gun then. I'd rather not go through that again. Uh, accuse Sonia of lying. Doubt Sonia. Believe Sonia. That's too bad. It looks like they took it. Missing gun. I mean, I believe her. Why not? Sonia appreciates your trust. Of course I do. Okay, let's deduct something. I remember last time I was so bad at deducting. Uh, O'Leary always plays it safe. O'Leary is threatening in stone with running Moore's, ruining Moore's career. Footprints at the gym belong to. Uh, Yale's souls don't match footprints at the gym. Uh, okay. Let's see, feet on the table, and these ones, are they connected? No, the footprints don't match. Or if O'Leary killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint, or in different shoes. Okay, at least something. Let's do next, uh, deduction. We have three more, that's a lot, I love it. Helen Moore, cigarette case. Yale souls don't match the footprints at the gym. O'Leary souls don't match the footprints at the gym. O'Leary keeps romantic pictures of Helen Moore. Okay. Um. Maybe this thing. No. Uh. O'Leary always plays it safe. O'Leary bet. 5,000 on Yale. 
How can it be connected? Oh, romantic inscription. Because they were dating. It's pretty clear that Helen Moore's cigarette case was a gift from O'Leary. Helen Moore and uh, Desmond O'Leary are still in love. Are they though? Helen Moore and Desmond O'Leary are still in love. O'Leary sold so much. Oh, judging by the bad stone is clear favorite against Yell. Here we go. Maybe this thing will work. Oh shit. I don't know. Oppa! Good job, it Kalman. Looks like O'Leary has rigged the fight between Stone and Yale. O'Leary fixed the fight. Okay. We got another thing. Deducted. Do I still have something to deduct? I still have one more deduction. Let's do it. Uh, Mary's been at Yale's place recently. Don't match. Jim Bulger signed the document with his food. I don't know, Yell. No, it doesn't work. Um, O'Leary's wife is having an affair with Colbert. Helen Moore and Desmond O'Leary are still in love. Oh my gosh, they both cheating. No. Helen Moore says she hates O'Leary, but then o uh, Helen Moore and Desmond are still in love. The heck? Bullshitting me. If she's still in love, why does she claim she hates him? What is she hiding? Good question. Okay. That's it. She was like, okay, move. Should I talk to lady or not? No. It looks like it was no. What is this? Mm. A purse? What is that? Mary Purnell. Really? You think she did this? No. I don't think so. But I do see a card here. Can I get it? Oh my gosh, come on. Okay, I cannot. Hmm. A piece of jean fabric on the stairs that lead to the gym rooftop. Oh my gosh. She is dead. Mary's gonna die. No way. Can I get it? No. We're gonna find the body of Mary. At least she's gonna be reunited with with her lover uh, in heaven. She is dead. Fuck it. I liked her. My God. Hmm. What's hmm? If I were you, I wouldn't quit. Trust me, it might be painful at first, but time heals all wounds. Why did you listen to me? Mary Purnell's murder. Wait, what happened? Could be a knife wound. The murder was brutal. Yeah, like super big, it's crazy. Shit. It's like Fred Krueger. That's a big fucking knife. What is this ladder though? Poor lady. The killer didn't take the note. 
I need to tell you several things, things about your father. In fact, I know he would have wanted me to tell you, among them the fact that you co-own an apartment in Manhattan. Please call me. Yours truly, Mary Purnell. Mary is dead now, yo. Sonia, and then go straight to a friend's house. Don't even think about going home and definitely don't come back here. I'm I'm staying at a friend's house. I haven't even set foot in my father's place yet. Can I hug her? Kiss her? Comfort her? Come on. Good. Do you have the keys? If the murderer didn't find what he was looking for, that might be his next stop. If he hasn't been there yet. It is cray cray, everybody. Things are escalating like super fast. So many, like two people died in this episode already. This is a violent game, yo. Gee. Oi, right, this is. I want to have the keys to the place. Which meant I wouldn't have to use my lockpicks or... Oh fuck. Somebody's there. <gasps> Come on. Yard of Boxing, the book. Wait, well, let's see. It doesn't look like anyone picked the lock. Huh. Do you want to close it? Nope. Let's start from the kitchen. What's up with the fridge? Pizza? No Ready-made meals on airplane trays in front of the TV. Who would have thought we'd end up eating like this? Right? Dunn died four days ago, and that lettuce still looks okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, funny. Oh, wait. I think there was something else I could have checked. No? Come on. Pan view. Here we go. No, there's nothing. But, there's a picture right here. And I love them collectibles. Sardines. It's been open for a few hours. An empty can of sardines at Dunn's place, ordered recently. Shit. Purchase and sale agreement. Of course. Now I see how Dunn bought the apartment he was going to share with Mary. This place has to be empty in two weeks for the new owners. I wonder if Sonia knows about this. Dunn was going to move in with Mary Parnell. Oh my god. The clue collected allow new deduction. Soon, soon. I'll do all the deductions in a bit. The Quiet Lion. What? I seem to recall Dunn being mad about the pictures. But who knows? Dining room. Another book. The life of Harry Bradwick, father of baseball. That's so interesting. Like, everyone is obsessed with... It looks uh, like Dunn had already begun to move his things. Everyone's obsessed with sports here. Old crew, Dunn. huh? Thorpe? Hmm. No idea. And these two? They look familiar. Not really. I think there's someone else inside the house. 
the apartment. It's hard to believe that a pair of boxing fists could play something like this, although I'm sure he had the lungs for it. Here you go. An artist. The clue collects to allow a new deduction. Only one, so far. I don't want to call nobody at this moment. Okay, let's do a deduction, since we're here. So yell um, by the footprints, O'Leary is having a fear, an empty can of done sardines. Uh, Mary's been at Yell's place recently, no? A paper tissue that smells like sardines. Here we go. The same it's person. It's clear that the burglar came by the house before heading to the gym, which means he probably didn't find what he was looking for in here. Okay. He didn't find it. It's good though. All right, it's probably jazz, black Look fantasy. The guy sure had good taste. E. The art of boxing. Uh, an art, no doubt. People call anything art. I say art for senselessness. Okay. I see more art in a boxer's hypnotizing footwork than in certain modern paintings. That's for sure. Oh no, don't play it. Turn it off. Uh. Jesus, show me your teeth. I don't like you when you won't let me breathe. Oh, oh. Hopefully it's not licensed though. Okay, what's up in his bedroom? So many rooms I can investigate, explore. That's Mary's room. That's Mary's room. Frank Papalia, under your One skin. One of the very few teen idols who only got better with age. Wish I been a, wish I been a teen, teen idol. Wish I been a prom king, fighting for the What's title. What's this doing here? That's a good question. Spanoffs glow in Sonia's done room. I mean, I know she was like, yo, my man. You wanna play a Could game? Could this be the origin of Sonia's interest in business management? Of course. Ooh. Gotta spin me like a ballerina. That's pretty. That's pretty. Game safe. Alright, bad bathroom. I gotta check this Hall of Fame sometime. Uh, where's the um, bathtub though? It's a picture, it's a picture. You still looked at her every morning? So many years later, with a new love? Maybe we don't need to forget. Maybe pain just transforms into... I don't know... something. That's true. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Makes me wanna cry. For the world's best dad on Father's Day, Sonia. Oh, so sweet, baby. So sweet. Nothing, though. A notebook? What's happening? My dear Mary, I'll bring you to this rooftop, the place where... Where our love was born. Where the love I feel for you was born. To give you this ring and... Oh, he tried to... Uh, this is too come up private. come up with the proposal speech another empty closet what's empty he already moved all his clothes be, 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 be. Elaine I think that was Dunn's wife's name according to Jake. It's so beautiful. Picture of a tree. So beautiful. <sighs> no matter how hard I look, I'm not getting anywhere. I need to talk with Sonia, and maybe with her uncle Tim. But can I check some stuff? Oh my gosh.
It brings back... I don't know. Good memories. Good memories? An optimist, are we? It's like yes. remembering the last day of summer. Scenes full of joy, picturesque landscapes, and yet the light is faint and the air is still. The calm before the storm. I love it. My favorite. I know the feeling. I know that feeling. I figured that much. I can see it in your eyes. We met in the army. Oh, really? <laughs> we were all professional athletes. They called us the Olympic Five. <laughs> all right. Who's the guy on the right? Angus Mitchell, our combat medic and a doctor with the New York Warriors. It was Spanow who got him assigned to our platoon. Hey, isn't that Craig Spano? The guy on the Morley's billboards? Yes, indeed. Our captain. He was the oldest, after all. And star of the New York Warriors. <laughs> he was an orphan, you know. But he loved the sport so much that he said baseball was his family. He was the one who had Mitchell assigned to our platoon. Gee, I'm getting so much information was boxing? Yes, about was. all the people. I had already seen him fight before I even met him. He was as humble in the ring as he was in life. He'd always let his rivals take the initiative. I remember how he barely dodged the blows. If you didn't look at his feet, it seemed like he wasn't even moving. And the footwork, pure dancing. You could almost hear the music. The song would play until his opponent was exhausted. Then came the drum roll, followed by Dunn's victory by KO. KO. All right. Who's the guy on the left? Ah. Viktor Sukovsky, the athlete. You've probably heard of his medals. Uh, what about you? I had just signed with the Milestones. I hadn't even played my first game, but people said I had a bright future ahead of me. And you did, but the war got in your way. You did. And you did. The cop at the hospital sure seemed happy to be the proud owner of a Tim Ironarm Thorpe autograph. Who would have thought that I'd end up becoming Tim Iron Legs Thorpe? What happened? I fought the Nazis for two years, up there in the sky, over Europe. And I never set foot in a field hospital. Three years later, I crossed the street without looking. And look at me now. And that's it. It's not even war. What happened to all of Crazy. them? Zukovsky died the same day the injured Dunn. Dunn received an honorable discharge and came home. He quit boxing and opened his gym. Mitchell was redeployed to a field hospital. Spano and I continued in the same unit, but nothing was ever the same. You see what I meant with the last day of summer? Oh, yeah. And after the war? Well, who the hell cares? What's so I blurry, do. though? Oh, what happened to Spano? What happened to Mach Mitchell? What happened to Mitchell after the war? Mitchell? Who knows? We lost touch. I hope he's doing well. Oh, I think I saw Mitchell not too long ago. What happened to Spano? Well, you've seen the billboards. He made it big time. When I was forced to retire, I got him some advertising deals. That's how I founded this agency. But then, something happened to him. He became sullen. He fell out of shape. And slowly but surely, lost touch with reality. He withdrew from public life and broke off our friendship. Haven't heard from him in, uh, what, three years? And believe me, I've tried to contact him. Three years? Gee. I think I saw Mitchell not too long ago, but I can't remember where. Seriously? Please try to remember. I'd love to hear from him again. I'll do my best. I don't remember where I saw him. You think him. Spano might have been involved in Dunn's death? Spano? No way. He and Dunn were always... Well, Spano's changed so much that it's hard to say. Allow me to double your wage. You have to find the murderer. Maybe Dunn stayed in touch with Mitchell or Spano. Maybe even with both. But he never told me anything. Maybe Sonia knows. I doubt it. But that's not the only question I've got for her. May I... Everything is so blurry. And double wage? Yes, please. I love it. So, we're gonna call somebody, Sonia or who? The clues collect allow new deduction. Okay, we are ready. I love them deductions, everybody. Yes. Sonia. No, she's not here. Who's calling? Where is she? 
Oh girl, I'm so sad for her. Papa died. Papa's lover died. Ooh la la booty. Heart shaped sunglasses. Cause we're gonna take a ride. Was your father in touch with Spinoff or Mitchell? Was your father still in... Have you ever wished you'd never been born? What? Now and then, often. All the time. Now and then. Yeah, sometimes. Then we're both in the same boat. First time was right after moving to New York. I hated my mother. She was the reason we moved from the countryside and the smell of freshly mowed grass to this dirty city and the smell of medicine. Her medicine. The second time was after she died. I hated myself for having hated her before. For not having loved her enough. The third time was when my father shut himself off. I hated him for that. For abandoning me. For giving in to the booze. Now he's dead, so... Take a guess. You hate yourself for hating him. No, I'll be positive. You've realized just how much you really loved him. I guess so. But that's not the worst of it. The problem is I don't know how to live without hating him. Oh. Over the last few years, everything I've done was meant to push my father far away. To avoid being like him. To avoid making his same mistakes. Without him, I just don't know who I am. <laughs> and you won't even let me hate Bobby. Which might actually help me. Bobby Yell doesn't deserve your hate. The more you hate, the worse you feel. That's true. The more you hate, the worse you feel. You think I don't know that? I need someone to blame. Without that someone, I have only myself to hate. You don't have to hate anyone. Hate me. <laughs> uh, uh, what if... Oh my gosh. Hate me. A good detective would have found the killer by now. That's nonsense. You've already come so far. I'm sorry I haven't been a little more... grateful. In any case, you shouldn't hate yourself. You are... No, you have such good qualities. Kind and beautiful, smart and kind, beautiful is my kind, smart and beautiful. You're kind, smart, and beautiful. Are you really trying to flatter me now? No, I... Seriously, I didn't mean to... Sorry. Anyway, can we just drop the subject? Did it's... you go to my father's apartment? Yes. The thief went my there before coming to the gym. Her? Which leads me to believe he didn't find what he was looking for. And what was he looking for? That's what I intend to find out. With your help. Oh, uh, he had great taste in music. Uh... Your dad had great taste in music. You think? Let me guess. The same taste you have, right? Exactly. Ah. You don't know how happy that makes me. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, childhood room. War picture. I found a picture taken during the war. <laughs> the Olympic Five. Oh, yeah. Did you meet any of them, besides your father and uncle? Well, Uncle Tim actually isn't my uncle. Oh. No? He and my father loved each other like brothers. Did he tell you that he saved his life? Mm. Your father saved Thorpe? They were flying over Brittany in a three-unit fighter plane. Zukovsky was the pilot, my father was the co-pilot, and my uncle manned the machine gun. Suddenly, enemy fire killed Zhukovsky and injured my father, which is why he never boxed again. My uncle jumped out of the gun turret, ran to the cockpit, and managed to pilot the plane to safety. Oh, the times my father told me that story. And now... And now he's gone. You still have your uncle. What can you tell me about Spanov? What can you tell... Okay, you still have your uncle. You still have your uncle? Yes, I guess you're right. Maybe he can also save me. You managed to make Sonia look on the bright side. Okay. Uh, Spano. Did you ever meet Spano? What can you tell me about him? I think I saw him once, but 
I was just a little girl. I think my uncle turned him into a star. That was a long time ago. I How found a baseball glove with Spano's autograph in your room. Oh, I've never seen it. My father must have put it there. Although I don't remember him having a signed glove. What about Mitchell? Did you ever meet Mitchell, the doctor? Mitchell? The lizard? No, never. Why? Oh, nothing. Here we go. I think I've seen him somewhere. In the hospital. Dan sold his apartment childhood. I saw your old room. That's embarrassing. I see you were dead serious about me hating you. Ah, uh, the music board. Still keep. I like Frank Pala. Okay. It's odd that there are practically no toys or memories of your childhood in the room. Except for a small music box. That box? It might just be my last happy memory. Oh my gosh, it's a memory. It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. She was painting this beautiful picture of a tree. I loved reading stories about pirates. It's always something about pirates, huh? So, my father drew a treasure map for me. I searched the whole house one clear at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a, a tire swing. Swing him in the backyard. Pull X your marks the spot, so I, I dug to find my treasure. I loved the music it played. The ballerina and the Got little a, secret compartment. Gotta spin me around like a ballerina. Oh, the secrets I kept in there. I think it's the first time I heard you call your father, Daddy. Daddy. Really? <laughs> Let me put on a show for you, Daddy. Don't hit the music box under the swing touch. Uh, I like Frank Papala, the abacus. Did the abacus. abacus inspire you to dabble in finances? The most useful gift anybody has ever given me. A gift from your Uncle Tim, a gift from your mother, a gift from your father. I don't know, mother. A gift from your mother? No. From my Uncle Tim. He used to say that in this day and age, a woman should know how to count. That's for sure. My father didn't agree, but he didn't oppose it either. People thought he was a liberal because of his attitude towards racial issues. But at home, things were different. Don, conservative. I'm also a fan of Frank Papalia. Oh, yeah. The poster. I only liked him because my father thought he was too modern. But I'm glad we agree. I thought you shared my father's taste in music. Are you cold? I think that's about it. Are you cold? A little. Maybe I should go. Sonia appreciates the fact you noticed. Uh, okay. I mean, I still have a couple questions. Wait, I still have a couple of questions for you. Uh, Dan sold his apartment. Your father sold his apartment. The new owners move in in two weeks. What? I'm sorry. I think he used the money to buy a new place with Mary Purnell. The letter you're holding explains the rest. Oh, shit. I wish I'd had the chance to talk to her. Right? That's it. Well, Go and warm I think up. you've already answered all my questions. <laughs> it's about time. I thought you were waiting for me to freeze out here. Anyway. Thanks for the company. Ooh la la, thank you. Sonia, thank you. You managed to make Sonia feel a bit better. Aren't you coming? Yes, darling. Yes, Sonia. I knew I was looking at a solution. But what exactly needed solving? How to win her heart. Okay, okay. We have to. Music box under the tree. Um, what are we looking for? What's up with the tree? Hmm. Maybe Dunn used the same hiding place once more. All right. Oh, shit. This freak again. 
I'll never understand why detectives and criminals bluster you while they fight each other in the picture. What a waste of breath, focus, and energy. Oh my god, no way, please. No. Yes, Sonya. Come on, Black Sad. Save the girl. <gasps> Motherfucker. It's not the lack of credibility in the screenplay that bothers me. Plus, it's actually pretty handy. When a crook talks to you in the middle of a fight, you know you're up against a rookie. Vertigo, help him. Help him. And if he doesn't even say, help me please. Oh my gosh, what is he trying to do? I'm not a killer. Why he felt... He died? No, I don't think so. This is crazy, guys. I'm glad Sonya came back and saved me. Without her, I'd be dead. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. All right, guys. We're gonna finish on this today. We're gonna continue in the next episode. Gonna talk to our main, Mr. Smirnov. And then I think we're gonna interrogate the killer guy, the bandit guy who tried to attack me and kill me. So that's what's up for today. Don't forget to drop a like, write a comment, subscribe to this channel, and see you next time. Bye.